and understand exactly what God is trying to get to us. Amen? Amen. And then we're going to release the prophet, and um, he's going to seal the deal. And I, and I, I already know, I, I just sense that God is going to do something awesome. Ooh, Lord Jesus, I just, ooh, God. All right, let's go. 2 Kings 4 and 8, and I want to just read a little bit of this, and, and then I'm going to give you a little history, and then I'm going to skip over, okay? And it fell on the day that Elijah um, passed to Shunem, where was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread, and so it was that often as he passed by, he turned in to the two eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold, now I perceive that this is an holy man of God, which passes by continually. Let us make a little chamber, I pray thee, on the wall, and let us set him, set for him there a bed, a table, and a stool, and a candlestick. And it shall be, when he cometh to us, that he shall turn in thither. And it, it fell on the day that um, he came thither, and he turned into the chamber and lay there. And he said to Gehazi, his servant, call the Shunammite. And when he had called her, she stood before him, and he said unto her, Say now unto her, Behold, thou hast been careful for us with all this care. What is, uh, what is it, or to the, uh, uh, these bifocals, y'all, bear with me. What is to be done for thee? What is thou be spoken for to the king or to the captain of the host? And she answered, I dwell among my own people. In other words, I don't need you to do that. I'm pretty good. I'm well off. I'm okay. And he said, then, what then is to be done for her? And as I said, verily, she has no child, and her husband is old. So immediately he, he uh, perceives that there is a need. She's, she has no child. Her husband is old. That means there ain't a lot of action going on. And so she hasn't been able to, she hasn't, you know, she's gotten to the place where she can't have, she's too old to have children. Amen. And so... The Lord blesses her and he prophesies to her and tells her, by this time next year, you're going to have this child. And so she has the child. Maybe, maybe you already know the story. You probably do. But, but she has this child. And as the child, the child is it's not a big child. He's, he's probably, I don't know, I'm, I'm assuming two or three, still small enough for her to carry. And um, so he's out in the field one day and he gets sick in the field. And... Um, Probably in our, in our day and time, we would probably say he might have had a heat stroke of some kind. But he got sick in the field, and the Bible says that they took the child and gave him back to her to his mother. She sits him on his lap, on her lap, and the child dies. Now, this is the promise that God has given to her through the prophet, and for no reason, it dies. So now she's in a predicament, and she's wondering, why is it, man of God, that you have promised me a thing, and I told you in the beginning, don't tell me something that's not, you know, don't get me all excited about this, and then, you know, leave me hanging. Well, it looks like he's left her hanging, because this promise died. So anyway, the story goes on, and um, she takes the child up, and she lays him on the bed of the prophet, and she gets a servant to drive her to uh, where the man of God is. Now, if you notice in verse number 23, I hope you're, you have your Bible, 2 Kings 4, we're in verse number 23. Uh, he says, and her husband's like, you know, uh, what's going on? You know, you're going to see the man of God. It's not on the Sabbath. It's not time to see the man of God. And so she says, um, he says, Where, uh, wherefore will thou go to him today? It, it's neither new moon nor, nor is it Sabbath. And she says, it shall be well. Everybody say, it shall be well. It shall, shall be, be well. well. And so as she's writing, the Bible says in verse number 25, so she went and came to the man of God to Mount Carmel. And it came to pass when the man of God saw her afar off, that he said to the servant, behold, uh, yonder is the Shunammite. Now notice, she goes to find the man of God at Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel really literally means a fruitful garden. Everybody say fruitful garden. Fruitful garden. So she finds the man of God in a place called a fruitful garden. Oh, Lord Jesus. Y'all, come on now. Come on. I need you to hear with your heart today, not just with your ears. Amen. She finds the man of God in a place called a fruitful garden. And so she, so, so she begins 
uh, uh, the Bible says uh, he sends him out and asks, what's wrong with her? And is it okay with your husband? Is it okay with the child? And now her answer has evolved. It's changed. It's progressed. Now she says, uh, it is well. Glory okay? to God. It is well. Something has transpired in between the time she left home until the time she gets to the place called a fruitful garden and she finds the man of God. Now it's not only it shall be well, but now it is well. Uh, somebody say now faith. Now faith. It is well. And so she tells him what is happening and uh, he sends the prophet. He sends the servant. The prophet sends the servant ahead of him to go and take his staff. And lay it on the face of the child. He goes and he does that. But guess what? Nothing happens. Mm -hmm. Nothing happens. He reports to, to him. And he says. You know. The child is still dead. He didn't wake up. He's still dead. And so. So. What happens is. Elijah comes in. And the Bible says that. He lays himself on top of the child. Tell somebody, sometimes you can't get a representative. Sometimes you got to go right to the source of the one that promised you. Yes, I yes. Know, I know glory that, to I know God. That was a man of God too. He was a servant. But, but sometimes when you got to go back to the source. Somebody say, God is the one that made the promise. Yes, yeah, yeah. If it wasn't that Gehazi wasn't, you know, who he was, and then if it wasn't that he didn't have, the prophet's staff didn't have any power, but God was trying to say, listen, sometimes uh, you got to come to me. You keep going through other people. You keep getting advice from other folk. You keep talking to other people. I'm not talking about don't get sound God, godly advice. I'm not saying that. But sometimes we depend on the opinions of other people, and the opinions of other people are the things that keep us stuck. All right, come on. Oh my God. And there are times when you just need to go directly to the source. If he called you, if he made you the promise and the promise ain't working, yeah. it looks like it has died, don't keep asking everybody else what's going on. Why did it die? Why is it not working? No, no, no. God is the one that made the promise. So go back to God and say, look at here. This is what you say. Yeah. Teach. What you say. Hallelujah. Yes. Yeah. So the man of God goes and he lays on his face on top of the child, face to face, the Bible says. And it wasn't long before the, the warmth began to come back into the child's body. Now let's go down to verses number 31, or 32 through 35. Behold, the child was dead. Somebody say, it was, he was dead. It was he was dead. And laid upon, the, uh, they laid upon his bed. He went on therefore and shut the door upon them twain and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth, his eyes upon his eyes, and his hands upon his hands. And he stretched himself upon the child. And the flesh of the child waxed warm. Hallelujah. All right, all right. Glory to Glory. God. Tell somebody I feel my promise waking up. I feel my promise. Oh no, y'all don't y'all y'all know why. You didn't say that like you really feel your promise waking up. I feel my promise waking up. Hallelujah. It's being stirred right now. Hallelujah. Jesus. Glory to God. So then he 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 returned and walked in the house and and to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him and the child sneezed the seven times and the child opened his eyes. Now let me help you to understand something about this about this text today. And I know this is God giving me this word several weeks ago. But as I crossed the Alabama line, and Sister Angie will tell you, I started sneezing. I started sneezing. And I know somebody said, well, that's, you know, that's probably the allergen and all that. But no, this, this, this is the proof that God, this is the prophetic word. This is the word that God wants you to get today. I mean, uh, Prophet Herod, I started sneezing. And every time I, every time I sneeze, I can feel the presence of God. I can feel, I, oh, I just wanted, it's like, oh God, what is really going on? And the Lord reminded me of the word. So I started sneezing, A.G., and so the Bible says, now, now, now what's important about a sneeze? Come on. I'm going to look that up. And what happens when we sneeze? Uh -huh. A sneeze. Like a computer, uh -huh. our noses need a reboot. Uh -huh. All right. All right. Hallelujah. Come on. And when the sneeze works properly, it resets the environment within the nasal passages. Oh, come on. God. Come on. Come on. Hallelujah. Yeah. Tell somebody, God is getting ready to reset your environment. 
He's getting ready to reset your environment. Yes, he is. Now, what does a reset button do? Why do you need, why do you find reset buttons on different, different ty types of electronic uh, uh, products? Because that's sometimes when the communication or when the signal gets confused. Sometimes the signal kind of drops. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah. If you got the internet in your home, you know, sometimes just out of the blue, just for no reason at all, you can't get a connection. And what do you do? You go, you go and you, you go to the box where the internet is and you push that little bit buddy button called a reset button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do you, you didn't you never turned it off? Just something got on the line to confuse the signal so that what was working is no longer working. And so you have to just push the reset button to somebody. God is getting ready to reset my environment. Hallelujah. My, my total environment. I don't know what your environment is like. It might be he's getting ready to reset the environment in your home. Maybe he's getting ready to reset the environment on your job. Maybe he's getting ready to reset the environment. Hallelujah. Y'all ain't happy enough for me. Glory, Glory to God. God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory. So he resets the environment within the nasal passages so that the bad particles breathe in through the nose can literally be trapped. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Yeah. So that the particle, see, they, the, the nose, the brain sends a signal to the nose that there is an Lord, have mercy. Hallelujah. So somewhere along the line, you believe in God. The enemy has got involved in your business. Somewhere in the middle of God making you the promise and where you are right now, the enemy has gotten into your environment and he's tainted your environment and he's trying to make you think that what God said is not coming to pass. Glory to God. Now the Bible says that he sneezed seven times. Yes, yes. Glory to God. So God said, this is not a temporary reset. Lord have mercy. But this is a complete reset. Jesus. This is a total reset of your environment. This time when he resets your environment. Hallelujah. The enemy will not be able to come in and steal the promise that God has made for your life. Somebody needs to cast this in the Holy Ghost. Hear what he's saying. This is not temporary. This is not a little reset. But this is a complete reset of your total Seven years. Yes. And uh, she got up, 
She took our, she took our household down to uh, the land of the Philistines. It came to pass after the seven years had ended, the woman returned out of the land of the Philistines and, and she went forth to cry to the king for her stuff. So I said she was crying for her stuff. Because she, before she left there, she had some stuff. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. And so, came to pass. And Eric's hands out telling the king all about the miracles that Elijah had, had done and how he had raised the child from the dead. And she walks into the room, had restored the man, the child to life. And the king, he said, this is the woman. That it is her, it was her son whom Elijah restored. And when the king asked the woman, she told him, uh, so the king, oh Lord Jesus, oh. she told him, yes, she vouched for him, yes, he did raise my son back to life. But that's not the end of the story. Right. So the king appointed unto her a certain officer saying, uh, restore all. Oh. Oh. I can't get a happy choice today. Oh. He says, restore all. That was hers, and all the fruit of the land. Oh my God! Since the day that she left the land, even until now, somebody say he's restoring it all. When he resets my environment, he's restoring. He's not only making it better, but God is restoring all. Hallelujah! Before I hit this thing called famine, before I hit this place. Because we are sitting in the year of Jubilee. Yes, God. Yes, God. We are sitting in the year of Jubilee. And in this year of Jubilee, and I know you already know it, but I'm going to remind you. In this year of Jubilee, whatever you lost, whatever has held you in bondage, oh my God, whatever has held you back, whatever has tried to stop your anointing, whatever has stopped the Try to stop your flow, stop your money, stop your honey, whatever it is. God said in this year, you're getting it all back. Some of y'all ain't lost nothing, that's why you ain't praising. Hallelujah. You're not praising because you don't even realize what the enemy stolen from you. You don't even know what he stopped you from getting over the last seven years. But if you know without a shadow of a doubt that there are some things that you've lost, some things that you should have had, hallelujah, some things that God promised you. Said to me, he said, Tell him I'm a 
assigning a special messenger. I'm assigning a special agent of God Almighty. The Bible said that he assigned a special person to her to go with her and make sure that she got it all back. I want you to know that you're not going to have to get it back on your own. God is assigning an angel to you. Yes, yes, yes. That one that's been lying dormant. The one that you haven't been using. The one that you haven't been using the word of God to for to send him on assignment. God said, I'm assigning him. Oh my God, I heard him say it. I'm assigning the minister of finance. Hallelujah. I'm giving you a special messenger. In this season, God is going to give you a strategy. Hallelujah. He's going to give you a strategy. That's going to change your life. He's going to give you a strategy. That's going to change your results. He's going to give you a strategy. That's going to change your finances. See, I know we're looking for God to rain money out of heaven. But God in this season is going to give you a strategy. And it's not going to make sense to the natural mind. Because I promise you, the strategy that he gave Jehoshaphat made absolutely no sense. But tell somebody God's giving you a strategy in this season. He's going to show you what to do. Hallelujah. The Bible said that he is the revealer of secret things. He is the giver of witty inventions and ideas. And so in this season, God is going to give you strategy for witty inventions and ideas. Somebody shout hallelujah. If you receive that right there, come on, give God a praise on that word. Because you need a strategy. The one that you use Somebody say, come on, hallelujah, holy God. Thank you, Jesus. Now let's look at this. Hallelujah, and I'm almost done. Second Chronicles 20 and uh, verse 20. Let me start there. So I gave you a little background. So he gives them a strategy. And here's what the strategy looks like. And when they arose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa, and he went, and as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, O ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. Listen, you got to understand. You got to get to the place where when the prophet speaks, that you come into agreement with the word of God through the mouth of the prophet. Because I'm telling you, if you don't come into agreement, But there are times when you got to walk for your 
God has given you. Uh, you're expecting God to do hocus pocus. Uh, and you think he's I dream of genie. But that's not who God is. Uh, he'll make you a promise. Uh, but you got to contend for this thing. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, come on. Hallelujah. You, so then he says, who God? <sighs> and when he had consulted with all the people, the Bible said he appointed singers. Really? <laughs> he went and got the choir. He went and got the praise team. He went and found some people that knew what it was like to praise. Oh my God. He said he brought the singers unto the Lord. Oh my God. He brought them unto the Lord. The one who had made the promise. The one who had given the strategy. He brought the singers to the Lord. I told you, there are times you just got to go back to the source of the one who made the promise. He brings them to the Lord. And that they, he appointed the singers unto the Lord that should praise the beauty, praise him in the beauty of holiness. As they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord for his mercy endure it forever. Somebody shout it, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For his mercy endure it forever. And when they began to sing and to praise, the Lord set ambushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. Somebody shout in this place, there's so much power in my praise. Uh, Y'all weakened here today. What is the problem? The power is in your praise. Your victory is literally in your own mouth. It's trapped by your own tongue. The Bible said that death and life are in the power of the tongue. However you choose to use it is what you get. But there's praise on your lips right now. And if you can release your praise. your praise brings you into agreement with God. And you can't get from God what he's promised unless you're in agreement with him. Thank you, God. What happens in the battle? They began to win. Somebody tell, tell your neighbor right now, my praise will shift my battle. Yes, it will. Hallelujah. Tell them again, my praise. Now tell them, your praise. Your praise. Some of y'all ain't talking to nobody. See, this is how you miss your blessing. Tell somebody because you overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of your own testimony. Find somebody in here and tell them your praise will shift your battle. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So then if you begin to praise, then you'll stop toiling. If you begin to praise her, you'll stop struggling. If you begin to praise her, you'll stop moaning and groaning and complaining. Because you can't praise and complain at the same time. Hallelujah. The reason some of our battles have gotten the way they are is because we've always just talked about the battle and never talked to the battle. You can't keep talking about your struggle. You got to start talking to your struggle. Storm, 
land that Jesus uh, talked to on the ocean, on the sea, it'll do just like the wind that he spoke to on the boat. Y'all don't hear me. If you just talk to your struggle, talk to your need, don't talk about it, don't complain about it, don't cry about it anymore, but talk to it. Tell somebody I got an overflowing thing coming. Because I, I, I feel an overflowing praise. I feel, I feel a praise uh, that said coming up from, from the depths of my soul. Hallelujah. I feel a praise. Uh, Yeah! 
Jesus, 